Good evening and welcome back once again. So if you joined us last time, you would have seen the end of the, the season in terms of actual matches. Um, we've won the league and we won the cup. We didn't get a single loss or even a draw in any of the matches, which is fantastic. For today we'll have a look at a couple of different things. Mainly it's going to be transfer window, but first of all I thought we'd have a look to see how our current players are getting on. So just in case you're not familiar, if you go into the, the development sheet within PES 6, you can see a list of all of your players, what their stats were when they joined, and currently what their stats are. Now they can stay the same, and they can go up, they can go down. That is based on a few things, but it's mainly based on um, what I'm going to show you, which is a, a graph. So if you select any of the players, you'll then get their projected development. So if you look at Nick Pope, obviously he's 29 years old so you wouldn't expect him to really develop much further if, if any you can press r1 or l1 to see it's sort of in a greater scale and you can scroll left to right just to have a look around so you can see it's got his very joined it's got his current age at the top he's just about to turn 30 and you can see when he reaches 30 that that little line and um, which shows that red line shows his projected development that doesn't mean that's that's the way it's going to go but it's a good idea you can see it levels off when he gets to 30 and it doesn't actually start dropping until he's 40. now if for example he didn't play any matches at all like he might actually start decreasing in stats but it'll be a lot slower because he's on a on a level a development line now if you're on an up, upward trajectory you're obviously more likely to increase further so if we have a look at someone else so let's pick say Rodiol. he's on a on an upward tra trajectory as well. God, I can't say that word. He's only 20 years old. You see when he gets to 25, um, it levels off a little bit and then it continues to go up, level off, go down a little bit, level off, and then it starts to decrease as he hits 30. So he might not have as much longevity as, say, a Nick Pope. At the moment, he will be increasing. Now, if you play a lot of games and you're playing well, so you get good ratings, you can actually exceed that line which he was supposed to go down, he hasn't actually uh, gone down as much, but it's not really what I was looking for. But you can get above that line. Now, I think halfway through the season when I looked at these, some of these were slightly ahead. Don't worry about it too much. If you're playing young players, or relatively young players, and they're playing often enough, it will increase. Some won't have, like Botman's young, but also if you look at his trajectory, it's flat at the moment, so he hasn't actually increased then if you look further along when he gets a bit older he'll he's going to increase massively now these actual bar graphs can differ player to player so you can see botman is like a long lasting so a late developer but long lasting type you can get some people that develop really quickly really early but then they can tail off quite quickly as well but yeah it, and it is luck you can she change these when you edit players outside of master league you can't change it within master league and if I went into edit players now and then came back into this master league because it's already started, they won't change. So there is a little bit of luck when you sign in players because you don't actually know what... I can see my players' stats, but I can't see other players until I get them. Now, we're not going to go into team training in this video, and I probably won't cover it in a video, to be honest. And I haven't played it in a while, but I believe in the off-season, you can actually do training to increase your players. And I only picked a few friendly matches to play in the off-season because I wanted to focus really on transfer window and training. Now, in terms of transfers, the first thing to deal with, I think, is which players do you want to keep on your own team? Uh, contract negotiations. It's slightly different than other football games, and this did change with Pez in time. You don't offer a player a new contract until it's actually expired, which is a little bit strange. But it's a bit more straightforward as well. So if we have a look at negotiations, negotiation progress, I've already had a look at some of these, by the way. I haven't made any bids for players outside my club. We've received a few bids. So as you see here, the ones with the grey arrow are potential contract, contract renewals. This is what he's basically said that he wants. So we can just renew at that, or we can change this, maybe in decrease the years the salary increase whatever you want to do these green ones are where i've had an offer for players isaac's not going to go anywhere 
Dumb it, I think I agreed this one. So I'll accept, I'll accept them again, just to make sure. Craft, I'm pretty sure I agreed. Richie, I agreed, and that's it. I've agreed to renew Nick Pope's, obviously, Jamal Lewis, Botman, Anderson, Bruno, Willock. Now, to actually make some negotiations for players outside of my team, what I thought we'd look at first is where do, where do we need to develop? So we do need another goalkeeper, just as a number two. Ideally, a young goalkeeper that can maybe play cup matches. Could do with a right back. We could potentially do with a left back if one came, if a you know a superstar came up. But we could probably do with defensive midfielder to replace Declan Rice when he's not playing. We do notice a massive difference when we have to rest him. But it's not really a priority, and it will probably be a young player like twenty or under that we could develop with game time. Back in midfield ways, we've got loads of players. You know, got three fantastic players that we've currently got in there. We've then got the likes of Anderson, Joe Linton, Rayner, Willock, Maximan. So we've got a lot of coverage there. I would like to get another centre forward, an out and out centre forward. Now we know we can play Liao there, potentially Maximan and some other players, or maybe change that to a second striker. But I really would like to get another top, top striker if I can. If I can't, that's fine. But I would say at the moment our main priorities would be right back, young goalkeeper, maybe a third choice centre back. And that's probably about it really. Now looking at this is my list of players, so my short list. Obviously there's some of like top talents in there that I'm not gonna get. At least not now, maybe in a couple of years. So the likes of Mbappe, Haaland, etc. If you press right on the D-pad, changes to stars. So you can see they're all greyed out, which means that's the hardest player to sign. If I look further down, got Saka. So he's got one star. So again, it'd be very difficult to sign. But And then we've got some two stars. Great. Probably will sign them. Three, you might be able to even reduce salary, etc. Because they want to join. This guy is so easy to sign because he hasn't got a current club. And you find that if someone hasn't got a current club, they're a lot easier to sign. If they're playing for a club that's higher than you in the club ranking, and the higher they are, and the higher their salary, the harder they are to sign. N normally, probably these, if these guys were at a club, they would be really hard to sign, but they're two-star because we're at a club. So who are we going to go for? I mean, I don't know, to be honest. I would love, I would love someone like Hakimi for right back, but yeah, that's going to be almost impossible. Martinelli, I, I, would, I would love him as well. Do we really need him? I'm not sure at the moment so again i mean free agent though so i think it's worth going for him backer is uh left-sided so 22 years old i'm not really sure i'm not sure about him free agent but is it worth going for really you know i would love gavi or a pedri bellingham they'd be fantastic but if you see that square there on the left which is is that like an egg timer inside a blue square that means they're currently negotiating with someone else and maybe their own team for contract or maybe another team if you try and click on them you can't make a bid what i think we'll do is i'm going to make some decisions off camera and put in some bids and then we'll we'll have a look to see potentially could be going through and then we'll jump ahead and see if we're successful with any of them i'm putting in three bids um some of them are quite ambitious so they're probably not going to go through Brian Hill, I think it's pronounced. He's currently at Tottenham in real life. He's a free agent, so I'm going to go for him. Attack midfielder, got some great agility stats. Because he's free, it's it's worth going. He's young, I think he's 21, yep, 21. Left. So yes, that was the transfer window, pretty much done and dusted. The only other outgoing that we had was Shaw left. Uh, for some funds, I think it was about 4,000. So this is the start of our Division 1 season. What I thought I'd do is show you... Hang on. What I thought I'd do is show you the complete changes, the squad that we've got at the moment, the starting 11 potentially will be our main choice, but again, that's very flexible, depending on form, injuries, condition, um, and just how we're feeling the players as they get through the season. Well, Nick Pope and goal. First choice centre-backs are Gvardiol Botman. Got Destin Davies as the wing-backs. Declan Rice as the whole midfielder. 
We've got Almiron, St. Maximin, and Gumaresh as the attacking midfielders, and Liao and Izak up front. We didn't manage to get a replacement goalkeeper. We'll certainly be looking to do that in the next transfer window or in the summer again. We really want a younger keeper that we can develop. Pope is fantastic, but at some point he will need to be replaced. Um, and we would like to have that second option where we're going to be developing a player potentially in the cup games. Placement defenders, we've got Lascelles as the centre-back. Got Jamal Lewis, Target and Trippier as the wingbacks. Bellingham will be the first choice replacement for Rice as defensive midfielder. Got the likes of Anderson, Joe Linton, Willock, Brian Hill and Rayner. Um, that can play as the attacking midfielders mainly, but a lot of these players can play as defensive mid as well. And then we've got Wilson as the replacement striker, but like I say, a lot of our players are flexible in terms of their positions, and that's partly why I've chosen them. We've mentioned before the likes of Almiron, St. Maximin, they can actually play up top if needed. Liao can drop back into attacking midfield as well if needed. The likes of Bellingham, who yes, will be defensive midfielder, he can also play centre or attacking mid. Same as Anderson, same as Joel Linton and um, a lot of the other players can switch around in those positions so I think we've got a really strong squad it's going to be very difficult in Division 1 it's going to be a step up in quality in terms of the teams we're playing but also there's going to be a larger number of matches we're going to have some weeks where we're playing multiple matches which is where the large squad will come into play hopefully if we have a good first season and we manage to get into Europe then the third season will be even more difficult in terms of not just the quality but the amount of matches will increase quite a lot and you do have to rotate your squad a fair bit so at the moment it looks like maybe we've got almost too many players for what we need in terms of some of these players aren't going to be getting enough games for what they really deserve but come around to next season if we are in Europe that's going to really play into our hands so you're probably going to see a little bit quieter transfer windows um, at least for the next couple if we've got money to spend and a top quality um, addition is available then I will go for them just having a look at the calendar our first game in the league is at home to Galatasaray as you can see there and I'll show you what I mean in terms of two matches a week so over here in week 9 um, we've actually got Benfica in the league, but we've also got, I believe it was Galatasaray again. Yes, it is. So Galatasaray in the cup, the first leg. Uh, and then you can see on week 12, we've got the second leg and we're also playing Porto, I think. Yeah, Porto. So those matches are going to be the ones where we really need to rest some players. Games are going to come thick and fast and we're going to be playing some extremely good teams. So let's hope... Uh, yeah, let's hope we have some really decent matches. And that's it now. So thank you very much for joining. You know, I'm really looking forward to the second season, our first season in Division 1. It should be very difficult, but very rewarding as well. I'm confident that we can push for the title with the squad we've got. Whether we can actually win it, I'm not sure. But... I'm fairly convinced that we can get into Europe. So, yep, if you can... You can leave a like below, subscribe if you do like watching the videos, and also feel free to leave any comments with what your thoughts are on the season, any signings that you would like to see, and any other games you might want to see on the channel. Thank you very much for joining, and I'll speak to you all soon. footed going for him and then and another player we're going for now this is ambitious is Vlahovic from Juventus great stats strong very good finisher skills he's a left footer It'd be great to have a left foot striker as well and the other I feel like we need to improve the wing back positions again this is probably not the side where I need to improve but Davies from Bayern Munich the Canadian I was going to have a look at, uh, have a look for right-sided Dest, but he's currently 
in negotiations for Cond. So let's jump ahead, see if we make any progress. Okay, so some good news. Success on the contracts, by the looks of it. Babies were actually being successful. Hill were being successful for, but as we expected, Blahavich has uh, broken down. So if we actually have a look now that we've made some signings and sold some people, the squad's looking a little bit lighter, which is good. Let's just compare Hill with, sorry, Davies with Target. Davies is on the left. So Target's got slightly better defense, but then is worse in most other things on that page, apart from dribble accuracy. You know, Target's, he's not old, he's 26, but his, his uh, development graph is pretty much, it's not going any further. He's 21, I had to take over, but Look at that speed and acceleration. That's going to help us out so much. And then if we have a look at Brian Hill, again, you know, a good player to develop. Now, because these other players have had negotiations finished now, technically we can go in for any of these. Now, all of a sudden, the stars have jumped up. I'm wondering if these have suddenly jumped up because I was still technically in the first week we have finished the season and now it's like officially ending that I've moved on a week I think that's what it is so what we've actually done here is put in some bids from other players putting a bid for Dest and Bellingham tempted to go in for a striker but I think we're going to leave it for now then what we'll do is we'll play the next match and we'll see how this goes so yes that was the transfer window pretty much done and dusted the only other outgoing that we had was Shaw left uh, for some funds, I think it was about 4,000. So this is the start of our Division 1 season. What I thought I'd do is show you... Hang on. What I thought I'd do is show you the complete changes, the squad that we've got at the moment, the starting 11 potentially will be our main choice. But again, that's very flexible, depending on form, injuries, condition... Um, and just how we're feeling the players as they get through the season. Well, Nick Pope and goal. First choice centre backs are Gavardio Botman. Got Destin Davies as the wing backs. Declan Rice is the whole midfielder. We've got Almiron, St. Maximin, and Gumaresh as the attacking midfielders. And Liao and Isaac up front. We didn't manage to get a replacement goalkeeper. We'll certainly be looking to do that in the next transfer window or in the summer again. We really want a younger keeper that we can develop. Pope is fantastic, but at some point he will need to be replaced. Um, and we would like to have that second option where we're going to be developing a player potentially in the cup games. Placement defenders, we've got Lascelles as the centre-back. Got Jamal Lewis, Target, and Trippier as the wing backs. Bellingham will be the first choice replacement for Rice as defensive midfielder. Got the likes of Anderson, Joe Linton, Willock, Brian Hill, and Rayner. Um, that can play as the attacking midfielders mainly, but a lot of these players can play as defensive mid as well. And then we've got Wilson as the replacement striker. But like I say, a lot of our players are flexible in terms of their positions, and that's partly why I've chosen them. We've mentioned before the likes of Almiron, St. Maximin, they can actually play up top if needed. The Al can drop back into attacking midfield as well if needed. The likes of Bellingham, who yes, will be defensive midfielder, he can also play centre or attacking mid. Same as Anderson, same as Joel Linton, and um, a lot of the other players can switch around in those positions. So I think we've got a really strong squad. It's going to be very difficult in Division 1. It's going to be a step up in quality in terms of the teams we're playing. But also there's going to be a larger number of matches. We're going to have some weeks where we're playing multiple matches, which is where the large squad will come into play. Hopefully if we have a good first season and we manage to get into Europe, then the third season will be even more difficult in terms of not just the quality, but the amount of matches will increase quite a lot. And you do have to rotate your squad a fair bit. So at the moment it looks like maybe we've got almost too many players for what we need in terms of some of these players aren't going to be getting enough games for what they really deserve. But come around to next season, if we are in Europe, that's going to really play into our hands. 
So you're probably going to see a little bit quieter transfer in those, um, at least for the next couple. If we've got money to spend and a top quality um, addition is available, then I will go for them. Just having a look at the calendar, our first game in the league is at home to Galatasaray, as you can see there. And I'll show you what I mean in terms of two matches a week. So over here in week nine, um, we've actually got Benfica in the league, but we've also got, I believe it was Galatasaray again. Yes, it is. So Galatasaray in the cup, the first leg. Uh, and then you can see on week 12, we've got the second leg and we're also playing Porto, I think. Yep, Porto. So those matches are going to be the ones where we really need to rest some players. Games are going to come thick and fast and we're going to be playing some extremely good teams so let's hope uh, yeah let's hope we have some really decent matches and that's it now so thank you very much for joining you know I'm really looking forward to the second season our first season in division one it should be very difficult but very rewarding as well I'm confident that we can push for the title with the squad we've got whether we can actually win it I'm not sure you can leave a like below subscribe if you do like watching the videos and also feel free to leave any comments with what your thoughts are on the season any signings that you would like to see and any other games you might want to see on the channel thank you very much for joining and i'll speak to you all soon